Thank you. So as you see, I'm one of the gray-haired guys. <laughs> so yes, um, and it's great that Daniel kind of gave you the big picture on the whole roadmap. And, um, but it was all developed when we started thinking about kind of a, on, a, on it from a holistic way. Um, so let me talk you um, through the roadmap uh, a little bit more into some of the detail um, that comes to it. So the key thing, the key question we wanted to uh, solve is actually delivering a digital workforce. Um, and in order to actually deliver a digital workforce, you need a certain key things. It's like a track uh, and you have to meet certain stations on this particular track. And we found that one of the big ones was of course capability. So this is about the scope that you can automate. Um, and this includes you know, all the AI technologies and those components, but then also agility. So this is uh, how to implement uh, RPA as quickly as possible, but also as easy as possible. So actually democratizing in a sense and making other people who are not technical able to apply and create their own RPAs. And last but not least, an area that is very important because it's kind of, everybody is very much concerned about AI technologies, but the big thing that is actually coming is, is scalability. Putting in place a POC is one thing, but putting it at scale is a totally different thing. And uh, Daniel has already kind of alluded to it pretty, pretty nicely. Um, so from that regard, we, we see um, our whole roadmap as, as multiple tracks. So the first track is around capability, and you already saw kind of one of it um, in the beginning and Daniel's tracks. So the first challenge you have to, to meet is around the computer vision. So this is, you know, remember that an RPA, you're imitating the hands and the eyes of a worker on a PC. So having accurate computer vision, having the right, the best eyes to identify objects and then um, turn them into uh, actions in the back end to some other legacy systems or whatsoever is one of the key things. So handling that, but also to that included is the whole intelligent OCR discussion. So you see me structured to structured. So that's the first station that on this kind of um, track that needs to be covered. The next one is around machine learning. So this is around making decisions, may enabling the machine to kind of be trained through supervision to make uh, appropriate decisions and, and coming more than the kind of the path of a human like. The next one is around language. And language is twofold. So there's language just processing unstructured to structured, but it's also language around conversation. So this is where the digital assistants, the chatbots and all that come into play. Because it's a bit of a different nature to have a whole conversation in mind knowing what I said at the beginning and how it then kind of ends up to uh, a final transaction which ends into an RPA transaction. And last but not least about reasoning. So this is where actually the component of being able to listen or being under, able to understand what, uh, what many users are doing and even generating the RPAs itself um, is, is one of the key areas. And we have a path here where we are actually combining process mining and process intelligence with the generation of RPA. So let me try to allude to all of this a little bit uh, more in detail. So the first thing around computer vision is that we realize, okay, we can already um, uh, identify all, most of these objects very, very accurately with intelligent methods of anchoring and so forth and to a vicinity of a particular object and so forth. But we are now adding to it is deep learning. Deep learning in a sense that you, we are able to provide uh, uh, kind of the elements that you need to understand a particular object on the, on the screen. So you are able to understand what's the, what's the okay button, what are, the, what are the combo boxes and so forth. And the robot will be able to identify that totally automatically. So what we're actually creating is almost like a self-driving car in the same sense. It's rule-based, but it has all these kind of deep learning uh, uh, methods to understand exactly what the objects are that it is facing and can even predict certain activities. So based on that, we can even increase the uh, accuracy of identifying objects. So this is why we're saying, you know, the self-driving robot. 
Now, I mentioned already with the um, RPA that we have the eyes and the hands, but what we're adding to it, in a sense, is a, a certain element which is kind of like an intelligent process automation system, because when you apply deep learning and the processing of image recognition, we need something powerful in the back end, so you need to kind of integrate something like GPUs. So in order to support this, we will have uh, an, an IPA system that is basically running a deep learning element. And, and whilst we have that, we might as well also integrate all these other technologies that um, Danny has been mentioning um, so that we can integrate them either from the robot directly through an interface call or even through a service that is connected to this IPA system. So when it comes to machine learning, um, uh, and, and computer vision, we're still at the computer vision. So when you have documents that need to be extracted and so forth, all those uh, particular elements, um, uh, this is where we are partnering and where we're integrating this with, for example, Abby. Um, and this is kind of the, the, the key product here we are integrating is Flexi Capture, but we also integrate other products, um, but this is one of our main products as a, as a main strategy. And RPA is almost like the orchestration amongst them. When we come to machine learning, that's more about when, you make, when, when it comes to decision making, you need to be able to make classifications. You need to kind of be able to train it with some training data sets to say, oh, this is an incident, this is a kind of a contract document, this is a, uh, a totally different kind of document. So training and, and providing those particular cases, that's something that we're integrating as well. So we are looking at various different technologies, but also here, Abby has uh, a smart classifier that we are integrating as well to exactly cover those particular cases. And then last but not least, of course, the completely uh, processing of unstructured to structured information um, using NLP processing in that particular regard. So also here, Abby has a product, um, the, the info extractor, but we are integrating, uh, as, as you've seen in the other partner slide before, with a much more other uh, technologies in various areas. And the key thing is to always integrate kind of the strongest products. And also, in listening to our clients who are saying, well, we need, we are looking in our particular industry area for this particular AI solution, and then we'll make it with the, with the integration. All of that is orchestrated through the RPA to enable the whole implementation. <coughs> now with the digital assistant and chatbots, it's a bit of a different story because, because of the conversation nature, it is far more closer integrated. The whole conversation, the whole knowledge, the whole kind of um, breaking it down to then the clear intent, knowing then what to extract out of the intent. And there are very strong systems on the market. Uh, if you think of dialogflow.com, which is API, AI, which is the Google product, um, and other products that we are kind of exploring in the moment and actually uh, testing and integrating um, to then break it down into once the intent is identified to then actually execute an RPA. So it could be ordering something specific or even registering and whatsoever. So we are in the moment even uh, uh, right now evaluating and playing around with dialogflow.com um, and we realize that there are certain specifics add-ons that we, will going, uh, we are going to provide to enable this conversation kind of interface and flow. And last but not least, around the reasoning area. Reasoning area, um, uh, so we, we are partnering with Salonis here. Salonis is already very strong in the whole um, uh, uh, area of identifying process deviations, um, optimizations, and so forth. And what we are actually providing to, as, as an add-on is a recording device or a, a smart listener that you install on the desktop, which will be able to just track all the activities and gather this information. That information will be fed into the um, solo system, and certainly now we have the full view of the activities, what's happening. What we're not doing is we're not capturing any data of the person itself, it's really purely the activity. And that's very powerful, powerful because once we have the activity, we're actually able to see, ah, oh, right, what are the particular patterns here and what processes are actually being done on the desktop level from the user and identify kind of all these opportunities and then we can visualize this. 
So Salonis will help us to visualize. Salonis will help us to have the human intervention, intervention to select the right opportunities. And then as an add-on, we are going to um, enable in the future something like a, you press the button and you get the RPA skeleton. And off you go and you'll kind of accelerate the whole implementation process. On the area of um, agility, one of the key things, and that's actually uh, uh, already a, a very good testament for our software, is kind of the, the user enablement. How easy it is to record yourself, creating an RPA, then modify it uh, accordingly. So people with quite a bit of more technical understanding, can, even if they're not programmers or technical people, are able to create their own RPAs. And I'm proud to say we even have a customer up in Finland, Vatsalaus, you know, publicly said that, you know, the best coders are our subject matter experts. And they have uh, actually set up a whole um, uh, uh, delivery of RPAs <coughs> just by the people who are in the um, business division uh, creating those RPAs and a very, very small CUE. And they have a very, very high rate of um, uh, 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 RPAs running without any kind of exception. So it's like a 99.7%. Uh, it's quite amazing, but the fact that our software is enabling that tells us that we are on the right track. But it's one of the key things, and it's one of the points that Daniel was mentioning. We want to actually enable RPA to make it so, so simple so that normal users can apply it and actually really use it in their day-to-day -day use. Deep integration, so this means you know, um, making more benefit of all the integration technologies that are out there to directly and open up into the whole area of, you know, whether it's a Salesforce, SAP, or whatsoever, using all the existing APIs, but also kind of integrating far more to a, to a wider, wider area, the whole area of IoT services, for example. And last but not least, complexity is one of the things that particularly it needs to be tackled. So we have multiple people creating RPAs. How is it coordinated? The whole reuse that Daniel was mentioning around um, RPA libraries that you can create specifically for, for your uh, company environment that you can reuse, embed, and accelerate the whole implementation is one of the key areas here that we're tackling. So to tackle that, um, one of the first things is like, we, we see there's, there's uh, multiple trials to kind of simplify this. If you think of MS Flow uh, or Data Flow or um, other kind of technologies that are trying to make that very simple and kind of if then else. However, they, they kind of uh, a bit more limited. So we're thinking we need to kind of maybe even apply some more, far more cognitive approaches to it. So we are, we're definitely exploring more to integrate and make it even further simpler to how to use and generate RPAs. On the whole integration side, there's a much more that we are already implementing, integrating with these partners you see here, or that we are actually um, uh, anticipate to, to do. And there's, there's quite a number of systems. So interestingly, the whole BPM world has discovered RPA as an accelerator in a sense, and we are kind of very closely working with them. And they certainly, when we start, especially with Oracle, when we started the first kind of engagement, it was really interesting to see, you know, that they realize that this is a, it's a market that really accelerates also their kind of um, uh, access to their customers. So the whole BPM and case management integration, also you see one of our partners, a Innate, out here. They're actually addressing something that is kind of in the area of scalability because once you have multiple uh, robots, you're gonna need something that orchestrates all these robots and uh, that's one of the solutions you can actually look at. And this is also where very strong the whole BPM area will be. We integrated already with CyberArk. Um, we have multiple, like I mentioned, in machine and deep learning, uh, multiple technologies that we're integrating with. We have some key strategic partners like Abby, um, and, and also all the other ERP environments and so forth that we are integrating here uh, is, is going to be kind of a direct connect to it. Cloud, middleware, our software is already cloud enabled. So these are kind of the key things to making it as open as possible um, to reuse, to integrate, and making it most applicable. So the whole view is to have an end-to-end holistic kind of platform, and that's where the strength of the RPA is. And we are providing, of course, I mean, Academy 2 was already introduced, but it gives you also with the whole community edition, we have the ability 
to uh, test drive, to really um, uh, do your own experience, really get practical hands-on experience and kind of educate that particular area so that you will find more resources being able to deliver RPA. The other big thing we are going to provide is around the RPA marketplace, as Daniel already mentioned. So it's a marketplace actually rather amongst customers that we can exchange some of their experiences and code examples amongst them and can you know, download that. And that kind of helps them also accelerate in their own development. If somebody else in a similar industry has shared that, that's really, really great and helpful. So all of this is done just to kind of accelerate the entire process of um, bringing it um, faster forward, the, all, the implementation, the velocity that Daniel has mentioned already. And this was the particular example, actually, that I uh, wanted to mention, just the numbers here again, uh, Vatsala. Vatsala, so for those who don't uh, know Vatsala, uh, it's, it's quite a large company in the area of marine technology. It's, uh, it's, it does also energy solutions. So you see the energy se sector is very, very much covered. And the interesting part is that they have basically done uh, an education of the people who have done the process to basically create the RPAs. Scalability challenge is, is, is a big thing, and this is something that we are kind of focusing on in the next release is very much kind of um, to, to cover in particular. So we already have a very strong uh, RPA platform, and the key thing is that you know, we have a very homogeneous, unattended attended robot setup. Um, if you talk to other vendors, it, it's far more like, no, this is the case of RDA, and this is the case of, they really make this big distinction. For us, it's kind of a technology that is similar. It's a robot that you can just apply and hydrogenously in install in various environments and so forth. So it's, it's a much kind of uh, homogeneous setup, which makes it also so easy to kind of uh, apply and, and grow. The other big point, and this is what Daniel was also st stressing about, is about security, so compliance. And it's uh, besides the fact that compliance area is one of the biggest markets for us in RPA, it's also one of the biggest challenges and also one of the biggest challenges most of our clients who start as a business department realizing, wow, we can use RPA to automate all this. Uh, and they may have forgotten maybe starting to talk to their IT department. Um, then they very much realize that that's a big point. And that's something that we are going to provide even more um, information and more material for to make it easier also for them to, you know, talk and align with their IT departments. Large scale, so where's the proof of the real large configurations? Well, you're going to see it um, uh, with us, and you have already seen it in the example that um, Danny has brought forward with our community edition of seeing how many thousands of robots we are you know, running in the moment and managing. And one, one very big thing, and that's something that maybe the BP BPM world had kind of um, you know, tackled quite well, uh, is the area around orchestration. So the orchestration between you know, orchestrating humans working together, but we have to now orchestrate humans and robots and AI systems working together. That's a very, very key thing because that's the only way how we're going to be able to deliver a digital workforce that operates with us and really makes us more productive. So how do we tackle all these areas? So one of the areas in compliance that we are doing now is beyond kind of just having uh, uh, just a role-based security approach, we actually are going to offer a resource-based approach. This allows a much granular way of securing elements uh, and data objects um, within the um, robotic process automation um, that is not seen before. And this will be a very, very powerful means if you want particular objects to be demasked, to be kind of uh, encrypted and so forth in connection with the authorizations. And also, of course, we're going to do more around cyber, cyber arc, actually integrating more of those cyber arc technologies, so shipping locks to the cyber arc vault and so forth. We already integrated the authorizations, but now we're also kind of moving forward into other uh, cap capabilities of the cyber arc software. The number here, 7,200, <laughs> 7, well, compared to the latest numbers actually um, Daniel showed you. But the fact that we have one single cloud environment where multiple robots, all these 7,600 robots, 
all around the world and different in, uh, environments are connecting to that one cloud to be orchestrated is very powerful and it just shows how much scalable our architecture is. We already have a, a very powerful kind of setup uh, to run in the cloud of our technology um, and uh, that's also one of the key things to, to, to remember the way we are configuring our technology. It allows uh, failover technology, it allows high resilience, all that is already there. But one of the key things that we're going to integrate even more is around being closer into the whole virtualization, infrastructure virtualization architecture. So in this sense, um, a Citrix or a VMware is able to spawn up these virtual desktop machines together with the robot so it can kind of create robot platforms on demand as, as needed. Uh, and that's, that's an integration that's going to be very powerful. And then one of the key things that um, uh, need to be mentioned is the whole orchestration. So as I already said, the whole part of uh, human connecting to <coughs> the robots and to the AI system and the whole handover um, accordingly. So and this is very important and this is where we are using kind of like Oracle PCS, this is where we are using uh, other uh, BPM systems who have this integrated case management system, this is where we use the Microsoft platform and actually we are going to provide definitely on the basis of the Microsoft uh, soft platform the ability that you can kind of hand over tasks to a human or to a robot user that where you know that robot user is going to process invoices and extracts the data, put it in a SharePoint list, and then this data is visible for the, for the human seeing exactly, oh, this is how far he's gotten. And if there's anything that needs to be picked up, the robot can reassign it to the human. <coughs> so let me talk a little bit about the um, technology part with, with Oracle. The, the interesting part of uh, Oracle as a partner, as a technology partner, is it's not just that um, we're kind of interacting with Oracle customers, but moreover, the technologies Oracle are offering. And one of the kind of key areas here around is, is as, as I mentioned, is the BPM and the case management operations, so assigning tasks and so forth. Um, but also, we can, you can use the Oracle PCS cloud environment to handle any kind of RPA exception and use mechanisms within the Oracle cloud that is kind of the best, best next move or some of the kind of adaptive analytics that Oracle uh, cl cloud platform provides. So that's also very powerful. But the other thing <coughs> is also it, there's far more integration um, cloud services. So in the same way, um, as other products like MooSoft and so forth in the market, uh, Oracle provides the integration cloud service, and the integration cloud service uh, has more than 100 adapters. So if you think of the deep integration, all that integration is already here with, with available to integrate into an SAP, into any kind of in other environment, or K2 environment, or Salesforce or whatsoever directly. The other interesting part is actually that in Oracle, they have self-service integrations. These are like, um, you could say like IoT wrappers. You can define a recipe. You can basically create an RPA that does recruiting, that uh, scans through all the recruiting databases. And if you created that RPA, you can kind of put a recipe around it, and then you can offer it to the uh, Oracle self-service integration, like an IoT service in the internet. You can combine that with um, a Google Sheet or whatever you want to use and just trigger that particular service. Very, very interesting concept. It's something that kind of from a managed service concept, you know, will go further and even our clients, have, uh, customers have said to us, that would be great if we could kind of some of those services digitize it in this way by offering that kind of wrapper around IoT services. So all that is definitely um, available with, with the uh, Oracle technologies as a, as a partner, and this is where we are going to work very closely. We are actually going to uh, plan to implement the uh, an, uh, Oracle Cloud Edition. So this means there's an integration to all the um, Oracle world, which you can just simply connect through the robots and um, uh, have a kind of combined pricing that is in combination with the RPA adapter which Oracle is going to provide. When you put the whole picture together, you get an entire metro map. And that was actually the idea. I mean, I know it's the colors probably of the London Underground, at least that's what, whenever I do this presentation in Japan, <laughs> they immediately say, ah, oh, London Underground, ah, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. um, 
but it's it's a uh, it's the the very powerful thing around kind of a vision and putting it in a sign kind of like a, on a track on that map is that you also see the intersections. You see the intersections. How integrations are critical for the kind of ex, uh, expansion and scope. How compliance is very important of part of scope, and then also complexity. How that is very important for the for the part of the whole scale track. So with that, we have an overall roadmap and detail around what are we doing in the capability area. Well, we already mentioned um, it's it, it is the, the deep learning robot. Um, so that's one, kind of one of the key components. We have far more integrations around the cognitive uh, importing kind of un unstructured to structured. Um, and uh, you will see far more integrations with the whole machine learning and the process intelligence. So the Salonis integration. We have um, more around the uh, agility part, so we're going to simplify even more the whole user enablement. Um, the marketplace is going to be kind of a key element to you know, make that available to our clients. So we're already working uh, on this particular technology concept to make that available. Um, and we're also working on some, some transformation tools to also make it easier to kind of, um, in a simple way, identify opportunities to then also um, help to manage the whole uh, RPA journey, um, to keeping track on all the sessions with the subject matter expert and the RPA developer and so forth. So we're also working on something what we call like an RPA navigator. Um, and um, the, and the uh, last but not least, of course, the whole scalability area. So the area around you know, virtualization, integration, and so forth, that's something that you're definitely going to see more and more of the integration, very close integration with the uh, case management and BPM systems. And I've done the fast version here, <laughs> but I'm absolutely open now for, <laughs> this is absolute, absolutely fine. Um, so I'm open for questions. Um, please. Yes. Ladies first, I would say. Can you bring the microphone down here to the lady in the second row, please? Hi. I wanted to understand what are your timelines for for what are your target timelines for delivering the infrastructure virtualization and the self-service capabilities of digital worker as a service? So the infrastructure virtualization will, will be around the kind of 2019.1. Um, uh, um, the, uh, the virtualization of the flexibility um, you will have much earlier. You will see that also in the and kind of in our, in our licensing pricing. Yeah. Thank you. So in the next two years, um, if we take the AI out of the BOSS cloud that it is, where do you see that we have the most effect on which part of the artificial intelligence do you see that we can use it mostly? Uh, that's an interesting question. So, so I think the whole intelligent uh, OCR area is going to be advanced most. So all this document processing, the semi-structured to structured, that's one of the big areas that, and there's still a lot to, to achieve in this area. So that's actually, I think, it's going to have to be covered very well. The whole area around <coughs> taking documents, extracting that into a kind of a, a knowledge base or ontology structure. So there's enough uh, so interesting tools we are exploring um, where you can upload several contracts and you can see them, all kind of the deviations and so forth, kind of visualizing that or extracting information in a kind of logical sense. So that's, that's already there and then we can see that. We're gonna see a mo lot more around the uh, whole digital assistant chatbot area. So, so us, so the voice user interface is going to be a, a big part. It's actually going probably going to be a, a new channel um, where you know you could order things and so forth. So like the internet, it's a new channel to have voice user, uh, a voice user interface and considering that our population is aging, um, think of my gray hair. <laughs> it's uh, probably, you know, uh, definitely a big market there. Uh, and many, many uh, customers are looking at from a customer user experience perspective. And the technologies we have out there are kind of, um, the, probably the consumers will kick it off again, the consumer industry. But it's, it's maturing. You can see it's maturing in a sense of 
um, you can use this technology is already clearly scripted um, to cover most of the transactions that are needed in customer services, for example. But this area will expand now and having systems that really are going to learn and that you can rely on it. The challenge with AI is that you constantly have to maintain and validate the data. And that's kind of the, 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 the area um, you know, you're looking at. And if you compare that RPA versus, you know, you have this school of thought that thinks, well, we could do all the rule base just with um, predefined machine learning models. But then when they do that, they constantly have to work on the data and so forth, and they're just causing actually more work for things they could easily do in a predictive way. The challenge we have in those two worlds is really, in an RPA, you can clearly see what an RPA is delivering. You can read it, it's like a program code. It's kind of clearly deterministic. So we, it's easy for us to trust. But an AI solution where we constantly have to kind of maintain the data and so forth, that's, that's a totally different uh, challenge. Good morning. Uh, I just have a question for you. So ah, there, merci. Uh, in, in terms of uh, BPM and case management solutions, uh, Pega Systems or APN are also offering uh, RPA in their platforms. How can UiPath stand out in, uh, with those big players of BPM offering the same scope? Well, first of all, I would say Oracle is also not a small player. Um, uh, secondly, um, we actually, very funnily that you say that, uh, we actually do have a client in, in, in lovely Japan <laughs> that uh, insisted of using UiPath and Pega. That's another point, <laughs> because they were not convinced of the uh, robotic software that um, they, you know, was coming from Pega. And secondly, we actually cover the, the full breadth, so we, have the, uh, you can, we can integrate into any uh, large BPM uh, case management environment, connect with us, our robots, and then also what we are offering beyond that, because Pega is offering like something like workforce intelligence, what we do more with, with Salonis. With Salonis, you can actually far more visualize and actually can find the, the appropriate right path in a much more efi efficient and effective way. There you, still in, in, there you still have to kind of connect all the manually the processes and discover your data, whereas we can use machine learning models and, and models of Salonis to kind of come to that point far more effectively. Final question for Boris. This one just behind the pillar. Uh, hello, Pet Pusamlin from uh, Sealy Solutions in Finland. Uh, we've been uh, using UiPath for a while now, but we've run into a problem with big data masses and uh, problem recognition since the software is kind of clunky with uh, handling big data masses with possible trouble in it. Is there anything with uh, simplification and agility coming towards uh, handling huge data masses at once with a lot of possibly erroneous data? Well, I mean, here's the point. Yeah, you, this is where you combine machine learning models. This is where you integrate machine learning techniques um, to handle this in particular. Um, and and if in the but the whole way of combining, orchestrating, and managing that, that's where you use the RPA. So embedding the machine learning element is the, the key thing. So you find the right opportunity, particularly in this one, where it makes more sense to combine. We have one client in, in the US who, who have a whole team doing RPA and machine learning, and they say, well, if you use RPA to do all the handling and the generation of the data and collecting of the data, and then apply machine learning, you've got your fast car. Yeah. One last final one. Hi, my name is Pablo. Um, very mundane question, probably. So I guess that um, a lot of robots being built all over the world, uh, some of them are very specific for the companies that are building the robots uh, because it's related with the systems or they are very specific for those companies. There are some others that potentially uh, can be used by pretty much anyone because they are common type of things that uh, or common type of challenges that uh, all the companies have uh, all over the world. So the question is, uh, are you planning to somehow package robots that are already built and then sell them? Or is there anyone in your, from your perspective, is there anyone in the market 
that is planning to do that? Right, so first of all, and I have to answer in two things. So first of all, you can already, if you have your robots on premise, then they're absolutely within the environment, so in this case, not shared. Secondly, from an architecture, you need to understand, you, we have something that is that's like a, a workflow definition, like an RPA code. And this RPA code, we will make available in our marketplace. So you can use that and apply it to other robotic environments and maybe just tweak it here and there. And that's exactly um, what we mean with marketplace, with kind of having a reuse. Um, we're also introducing something like a run framework. The run framework is very, um, very powerful because it's this all our best experience around running multiple large scale RPA operations. You can basically use our run framework that does all the logging and event handling and so forth like predefined. So we're already starting to do this. And what we're now thinking is putting it to the next scale, putting kind of getting more and more clients to kind of share some of that knowledge. And it was also, by the way, uh, feedback from our customers saying, well, I mean, we have no problem to share that particular code or so forth. If we can then, on the other hand, get the code from the other company and see how they are doing it, it's very powerful. Yeah. So I hope I answered your question, but I, I think I did. <laughs> okay. Boris, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Thank you.